everyone, it's Anya here at OurGabledHome.com and in this video I'm going to show you how you can make butter like your grandmother did. I have an old cookbook that I really like. It's a German one from 1912. My grandmother was born in 1913. So this is a little bit a year before she was born. But anyways, I find it really interesting to see how our grandmothers were doing certain things. And today I want to show you how our grandmothers did butter. Now, first of all, I'm going to do it with a Vitamix and of course our grandmothers did not have anything like a high speed blender. They were using a hand crank butter churn and as you can see here, I have the top piece because I have recently broken the glass that comes with it and I have a replacement on the way so unfortunately I'm not going to have that for this video. However. I have an older video in which I'm showing you how you can make butter super old fashioned with this hand crank. It actually just takes a little bit longer and a little bit more muscle power, manpower, but it's just as fun and actually works remarkably well. Now today I'm going to show you how you can make butter in a high speed blender because it's a little faster, it's a little bit more efficient and I kind of swap between the two. and. The question is how do people do it a little bit differently in this 1912 cookbook? So the first thing that I found interesting is that they take the butter out 12 to 24 hours ahead of time. In the winter they take the butter out 24 hours ahead of butter making and in the summer 12 hours. And the reason is that it makes the butter slightly sour, which is said to improve the longevity of your butter. And the other thing that they're saying is that when you take it out beforehand, it actually gives you more butter. So who would have thought? And I have been trying this method for a few months now and I have to say that I absolutely love it. It's really rich and creamy. We use raw cream. You can check out another video where we actually get our raw milk because we don't have our own cows here in this urban homestead. And this is all the butter. I have two pints here of fresh cream that has been sitting out on the counter for a little bit more than 12, I want to say 18 hours, maybe close to 20. And I've stirred it up a few times, which helps the souring process a little bit. Because this is so much, I'm actually going to do two batches and let's do that right now. Pouring it all in. Never forget to put the lid on if you do actually forget to put the lid on once, you'll never make that mistake again. And I like to start on a lower setting. And we'll just watch what it's doing here. I can already hear by the sound of it that it's getting a little bit more towards whipped cream. just another notch or two. So I just had a total bloop moment. Uh, before I was ready to show you how we're going to continue here, my battery on my camera went out. So I had to run out and charge it. In the meantime, I finished the first batch. And since I also have a blog and you can 
go there and read the whole blog post, I took some pictures and now I'm ready to do the second batch. I'm so glad I didn't do uh, both in one batch because I don't know what I would have done. Anyways, here we are. Um, I made the first batch of butter and I didn't rinse the container because I'm just gonna continue making the second batch. So we'll pour it all in and put the lid on, remembering to put it on very tight, set it to the lowest setting because that will also help the cream not splattering all over the place. Turn it on and I'm gonna turn it higher right away. I will look at the clock really quick. And this should really only take a few minutes. Every time I do this, I'm so amazed how fast this actually goes in the Vitamix. And I have to say that this method with the warm butter that's been souring for at least 12 hours is just so good and turns out amazing every single time. I will show you what the butter looks like when this is done. So let's keep churning the butter. I can turn this up a little bit more. And again, the first stage will be your whipped cream and then you just continue through that stage to the point where all the fat particles stick to each other and your whipped cream will actually separate into the butter and what we call the buttermilk. It's not cultured, but it's a very thin, bluish looking, uh, fatless buttermilk that you can use for your pancakes, you can use in baking, you can use for drinking. Um, you could culture it. Most of the time I find a good use for it. Now it's just about where it's separating. I'm gonna turn it up just a notch. And we have butter. Here it is, separated. And now I'll bring you over to my sink where I'll show you how I wash my butter and how I get all the buttermilk out.
And here's my butter. Here's the uh, batch that I made previously that has been sitting in the refrigerator for about an hour. And here's my fresh batch that I just made. So it's still a little warm, even though I've used some ice water. And I'm gonna show you the consistency. This is the fresh warmer butter. And even the butter that has been sitting in the fridge has such a beautiful, soft consistency. It's very spreadable. It's absolutely fantastic. And yeah, so here is your Easy Butter 1912 recipe. Again, the three major takeaways from this recipe are Take the milk out 12 to 24 hours. In the winter, you wanna take it out 24 hours before you wanna make your butter to start the souring process. You don't wanna stir it a little bit so that you can get more butter out of it. And because of the souring, the butter tastes better. It has a, they call it a deeper taste profile and it actually lasts longer. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here on my channel, please hit the subscribe button. I upload a new video every week. You can also turn on the bell notifications. Come back here next time. Thank you so much for joining me here in my kitchen and see you next time.